let's see. All right. It looks like we are recording now. Uh, what's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another video on the Conscious Approach channel. Uh, my name is JV Wins, joined as usual by my boy Dogon SS. Uh, a lot of things percolating in the streets over the last week and a half. So the first thing that we wanted to talk about is this story that began to fester sometime last week, the subject of Black Lives Matter and the apparent uh, 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 disingenuous allocation of funds and revenue came up, I guess, is a good way to kind of describe that one. Yeah. Uh, so let me go ahead and just kind of read this article that I found about it sort of gives you a rundown of what has happened with this particular situation. And then we can kind of give our two cents on the implications or what it all means. But, you know, it's a little frustrating, I guess, to see that this, you know, supposed benevolent cause has some seeds of corruption behind it. Uh, but, you know, it can be frustrating, but not surprising at the same time, right? Like those two things can be taking place at the same time. So this, uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm reading an article here from the New York Post. Uh, I will add a link obviously to the description of this video so that you can click on this for yourself to read it. But it says, the adage, wherever there is power, greed and money, there is corruption, seems to ring true for Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Cullors, Coolers, Colors. As the Post reported last week, Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation tax documents file, and they were apparently filed years late, with the IRS show Colors used Black Lives Matter funds to pay her graffiti artist brother. So this is her brother, who was also a graffiti artist, a whopping $840,000 for, quote, security services to the nonprofit and $970,000 to a company owned by her child's father for quote creative service services oh and the foundation's biggest single payout over 2.1 million dollars went to a consulting firm owned by another of its current board members shalomaya bowers i'm not sure if i'm saying her first name right um colors admitted on an msnbc podcast that she quote made mistakes after 90 million dollars in quote white guilt money Flooded to the group after George Floyd's death, but complained that those mistakes are now being weaponized against her. Yet she doesn't consider it a mistake that the nonprofit bought a near $6 million property in Los Angeles. Indeed, she instantly called the criticism of that purchase, of course, racism and sexist. It also gave $8 million to an allied Canadian charity run in part by Color's life partner, which spent $6.3 million on a downtown Toronto property. Both nonprofits insist the luxury spaces are being used to forward the cause. And then it goes on to say, Colors, a professed Marxist, also used Black Lives Matter funds to book chartered flights throughout the pandemic and herself collected $120,000 from the charity for undisclosed cult consulting fees. Mysteriously, Colors also went on a real estate buying bench herself, snagging four high-end homes for $3.2 million across the country. So there's a lot of stuff going on, and people are starting to question how this money is being spent. Those are facts. I did not read anything there that was an opinion. Those were facts. And, uh, you know, apparently a lot of this money is being spent on what some people might consider to be... Um, luxury personal pro luxury luxury personalized purchases so you know that's pretty much the situation going on there we all know black lives matter sort of rolls to prominence in the wake of what happened with george floyd and the momentum continued to steamroll with the uh, mom aubrey situation jacob blake and uh, Breonna Taylor and all of these various situations pretty much ever since the pandemic took place. Even though Breonna Taylor sort of precedes the pandemic, it all sort of gets lumped into that same period of time. And um, it's funny that she characterized the money that came flooding into the organization after George Floyd as white guilt money, but perhaps that's another subject. <laughs> perhaps that's a subject for another day. 
But uh, yeah, so now, um, and apparently the, the, the spotlight that this particular situation has caused resulted in her resigning as executive director of Black Lives Matter last year. Um, I believe last March, she was resi- no last May. So about a year ago, she resigned as as executive director of Black Lives Matter because of the scrutiny that the organization and her came under as a result of questions being asked uh, with respect to how this money is being spent and how you justify it being spent in these various ways. So you got nepotism, you got all of this stuff going on. Again, her brother is a graffiti artist who was paid around $840,000 for quote security in relation to Black Lives Matter. Her partner runs a nonprofit in Canada. The nonprofit received $970,000. So, you know, a whole bunch of stuff going on, but I guess we had some thoughts or you kind of wanted to speak on, you know, what this, what's going on or what it means or just the whole Black Lives Matter situation and and the money and all of that. So, you know, what, what, what did you have to say about that? Um, you know, I wasn't really surprised so much. Um, I got a little feedback. Let's see if there's like an echo control thing we can do. Because I can hear myself on your side. Hang on one second. Second audio. Let's see if that does the trick. All right, so all right, I don't hear echo no more. I had to change the settings. My bad. All right, but um, <clears throat> but yeah. So my my take on it mainly was that I'm not really surprised by this. You know these uh, uh, allegations. I mean, she's had allegations before, and she basically ran Black Lives Matter as if other people, how other people run their nonprofit organizations and stuff, where they're just you know, taking kickback money and breaking off family members and doing all this extra stuff, which if it's any other nonprofit, I think nobody really cares. Uh, It doesn't make it right, but nobody really cares. But since it's Black Lives Matter and there was so much dust kicked up by Black Lives Matter and, you know, surrounding, um, you know, liberal voices. And so since it's it's so big, you know, people are going to be paying attention to what's going on with these funds because a lot of people donated big time money and they want to be able to see, you know, a change on, you know, for whatever they donated their money towards. And so when reports come out that, you know, allegations or what have you of her mishandling the funds to take care of ourselves and take care of herself and her family and buy property and not just any property, like million dollar properties and stuff like that. It looks wild. And um, yeah, it just seems like, you know, corruption, you know, on the front end. But to me, personally speaking, I genuinely think that Black Lives Matter and any other organization like that, where they front run and they get TV ads and all this other stuff, um, you know, they're shield, they're shield foundations that aren't really built to institute change. Uh, They're they're there for cheerleading and rah-rah and media publicity. And so they will definitely collect all donations. But as far as actually, you know, trying to resurrect change in any capacity, they're not trying to do so. And so it speaks to like how people donate uh, you know, millions upon millions of dollars a year towards things like cancer research or whatever, whatever. And it's like, we haven't made any headway yet. They've been donating since, you know, I was a kid. So this is, we've been 30 years of donating and we've got some top-notch scientists and we still haven't seen any changes yet. And it's stuff like that where there's so much money going to so many of these uh, institutions, Black Lives Matter, we'll stay with the topic. But when you donate so much money and you really want to see a change, and this was the Black Lives Matter, and I would speak for at least how I perceive things, I really felt like the masses felt like this time it was different. I really felt like this time we really mean it. This time we have a movement. Oh, look, they painted Black Lives Matter in the streets of Washington, D.C. Yeah. Right? 
<laughs> man, we coming up in the world, y'all. They painted the street. So yeah. I really felt like people thought it was different this time. And, you know, with the new age of woke and stuff, people really thought that this was it when they were giving their money away. But One shiny moment. Yeah. And then, but yet again, uh, the people have been swindled and bamboozled because out of all of those, I'm sure it was hundreds of billions. I don't, I ain't pocket watching. I don't really know what they got, but there was a lot of money being donated. If not hundreds of millions, tens of millions. And that money being donated, I'm sure they did this here, did that there. But the amount of, of, of uh, support financially, the amount of support that they could have gotten uh, through the industries, whether it's journalism or media or anything like that, because who's not for Black Lives Matter? So why not have anything mobilized out of this instead of this woman's own personal pockets and her graffiti brother? You see what I'm saying? And so when there's everybody that knows about a particular movement, you know, that's master networking. You know, that's you, you just say anybody that's, you know, that can help, you know, build a curriculum for a school for for black youth. You know, anybody that can do this and, you know, something. But, you know, none of those things are being done. No true mobilization is being done. And so to me, this feels like a, a co-op movement from a, a grassroots thing that was really started from the ground up from real people. It was co-opted and then, you know, uh, exploited. And uh, for her stepping down was just to me a signal last year of her being, um, I don't wanna use the term guilty, but just, um, you know, feeling the heat from all these allegations and it was best for Black Lives Matter that she just remove herself. And so uh, that was a good legal and publicity move that she did, but still in that, nevertheless, uh, to me, the stench is still there and that uh, the organization is still doing its uh, sideways motion instead of upward motion. And um, yeah, I just think that people need to, uh, you know, take a deeper look if they do support Black Lives Matter financially, uh, take a deeper look and see if you really like where their, your funds are going. If not, I will use that money to go towards more of a, a, a grassroots cause. So that's, uh, that's how I feel about that mission. Yeah. Um, so after the, Trayvon, after the Trayvon Martin tragedy, that was when Black Lives Matter first kind of began, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as quietly as it's kept, Black Lives Matter at that point in time became a political organization. Mm -hmm. And so like, how do a lot of political organizations operate? You know, one, one, of, one of the reasons why people are so, one of the reasons why people can be so apathetic towards the political process is because there's this idea that political organizations don't serve a means to an end. Rather, they raise funds, they take care of the people that they, they the, the, the organizations raise funds mm -hmm. through an ideal that people can get behind. Mm -hmm. And then you don't actually, at the end of the day, 20, 30 years later, there might be some little things here or there that those organizations did do, but on a grander scale, a lot of those resources and funds went towards other political plays to form other relationships or to pay other people who work for those organizations and you find legal loopholes to do it. And so there is a sense of disingenuous that disingenuousness in that regard that kind of makes people roll their eyes at the political process. You know, like these political campaigns kind of do the same thing, right? Like that's one of the low hanging fruits of a political campaign is I'm donating this money to this campaign. These people who work for these organizations are living large, but where is the, where is the change effect that I'm looking for via my donations? Black Lives Matter is very similar in that regard in that it's a political organization. So at the end of the day, it just comes down to what are your expectations for Black Lives Matter? 
if you have the correct understanding that it's a political organization, you should therefore not get disappointed whenever stuff like this comes up because you understand that this is what happens with political organizations. Uh, this is just the nature of political organizations. It is what it is. Like, you want to know people who do it the right way? And this is the beef that I've had with people like Kyrie Irving, for example. I know I bring him up a lot, but he's just such a perfect example. Mm -hmm. But this is a beef that I've had with people like Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving is somebody who says, don't go to the bubble, don't play basketball. We need to go on strike and not do this, and I'm not going to play games, and I'm traumatized, and I'm not going to show up to work. When instead, you should be using the platform that you have available to you as a pro athlete to bring attention to the stuff that you want to bring attention to. That's the, that's the most practical way to do it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. and, and when you don't play, you're forfeiting your ability to do that because you have less eyeballs on you because you're not playing. And so, like, I think that it's uh, counterintuitive to bring an awareness to whatever cause you want to bring awareness to when you elect to go the route that people like Kyrie Irving take. Uh, I kind of look at Black Lives Matter the same. Like, you guys want to get land, you guys want to take the Lando Lakes Indian off of the Lando Lakes Butterbox, and you want to get rid of Aunt Jemima, and you want to get rid of Uncle Ben and you want to remove Dope Campbell from the name of the stadium at Florida State. But then you have people like Maya Moore who actually stopped playing basketball so that she can learn the law and become somebody who advocates on behalf of black and brown people who have been um, you know, wrongfully incarcerated. So she actually has boots on the ground and she's in the offices of congressmen and and, 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 and mayors and governors and she's in these rooms and she's trying to help write new legislation that prevents people from being wrongfully prosecuted and, and given unfair, unfairly lengthy jail sentences. So she's actually doing things that help the bottom line. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, with, you know, and that is sort of juxtaposed to Black Lives Matter, who's to me, in my opinion, seems to care about nothing but symbolism. So let's get rid of Aunt Jemima. If there's no Aunt Jemima, the world becomes less racist. Does it really? So let's get rid of Uncle Ben off the rice box. That'll make the world less racist. Does it really? Like these matters of symbolism, does that really fix the core issue? In my opinion, they don't. But what people like Maya Moore does actually does help. And as much as I'm a critic of LeBron, the school that he opened in Ohio, that helps. If you open a school that offers gainful education for underserved youth so that they can learn really important things like financial literacy, then that's going to help because if you can become economically free or if you have a greater chance to become economically free, then you have a greater chance to not fall victim to what we would characterize as systemic racism. And LeBron isn't the only one doing stuff like that. Jalen Rose opened up his school too in Detroit where basically it's the same thing. Jalen Rose did it before LeBron did. So like that's the stuff that actually works and you can actually trace the money and the money gets funneled into resources that help those institutions. Right. But when it, comes to, when it comes to things like Black Lives Matter, where it's like there's this nebulous gray area, okay, the money is being donated, but it's being spent on what? It isn't being spent on schools. It isn't being spent on tech centers or education centers or art centers. It isn't being spent on community gymnasiums or, you know, community centers. So where is it going? You got a bunch of people working for this organization and there's clearly money going, but it's being spent on what exactly? There's just so much gray area. But that's what happens when you deal with a political organization. And Black Lives Matter, for all intents and purposes, is a political organization. So for me, I'm not really surprised by stuff like this because I know that this is the way political organizations behave. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for people who think that Black Lives Matter serve this benevolent purpose, uh, you know, you kind of set yourself up for disappointment because you don't realize that, you know, this lady was basically a glorified uh, politician, this, this colors woman, you know? And, and, and politicians take money from donors and they take money 
from people who give to these organizations and they better themselves. And then after they're done bettering themselves, they look to as best they can, given the restraints that they have because of what they are classified as being a nonprofit and whatnot. They try to trickle in some money and resources here or there to help some kind of cause in some way, shape or form. But for the most part, they're looking for that kickback. And the dangerous thing with organizations like Black Lives Matter in particular, and I'm not, this is just pure speculation on my part, I'm not being accusatory in any kind of way, is like, you know, individuals like her, you know, you know, in organizations like Black Lives Matter or whatnot, they might feel emboldened to use the money in whatever way they want because they feel like this is my get back. You know, like I suffered for so long as a black American and I've been under the boot of this racist system. Now this is my chance to, to this is my chance for my get back. And so I'm going to take advantage of that. And it's my right to do so. And, you know, that can be your ideology, but you're inviting the scrutiny and you're inviting people to tear the organization down and to call it out for being corrupt. And at that point, you kind of have nobody to blame but yourself. So it's one of those situations where you have to make a choice. We're either going to do this the right way or we're going to do this the other way. And I just feel like as a political organization, you're hard pressed to find institutions like that that don't do it the other way. So right. that was pretty much just how I took it. Now, very good points. And and um, so basically is Black Lives Matter is a big, if she was actually having production, no one would say anything about her $800,000 graffiti brother. If there was actual production in the streets, people actually saw stuff and people wouldn't care that people would go, hey, that's her get back. People give it to the preacher every week. Right. They don't care. They see him pull up in a fancy car better than that. Right, <laughs> right, right. right. Back. right. No one cares about people's get back. But are you producing? Now, the people in the church, I don't know what production they get. <laughs> <laughs> for what they see and what it's given. The AC still don't work, but his car looks fire. So Range um, Rover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So pull it up. <laughs> but but for the Black Lives Matter thing, it's clear and obvious that people say, hey, where's your productivity? Where's your production? I don't mind giving you money. And I don't mind you spending money over here, over there, because look at what you did. You see what I'm saying? But yeah. if you haven't been doing any, this people's frustration with her. In, this, in these scandals speaks to their lack of productivity that everybody has noticed. So this isn't because, oh yeah, we're up in arms. No, people. if people saw actual mobilization in the streets, things actually happening, right? Then at this point, people were like, man, who cares? You know right. what I'm saying? Hell, we'll, get, we'll donate more money so she can get more money if we right. keep getting better schools like this or if we keep getting better services like this. Right. You know? Because again, when you have a mouthpiece, a political mouthpiece, as you stated, as big as Black Lives Matter, you can really bully people into doing stuff that we want people to do. And honestly, like if once once you start talking about uh, certain uh, lobbies and stuff like that, hell, Black Lives Matter could be used as a lobbying party because it yeah. is a political party, like you said. Yeah. But since they're not being used like that, they're just more of a marketing brand where they just hashtag everything. And oh yeah, putting stop racism on helmets. What the yeah. hell is that gonna do? Oh, we're spreading <laughs> exactly. Awareness. Spreading awareness? Yeah. That sounds like marketing. Right. That doesn't sound like revolution. That doesn't sound like change. So these people out here with their marketing tactics has swooped people in into buying into what they're selling that they're selling. And as you said, just like a politician, they're selling the hope and the dream of change, but there's nothing that actually comes out of it. But, but fat cats on the back end lining their pockets. And so, and, and this is very clear and obvious in this situation, and this is why people, you know, maybe not everybody, but enough people, I would say, are up in arms about how she's conducting herself with the money that everybody's been donating to. You know, people were crying donating those dollars. And she's sitting here using this for her, what did she say? Consulting fees. Yeah, you're what right. What the hell does that mean? So- you know, with all of that stuff going on. So, yeah, man. So, you know, I, I just really think, man, that, uh, you know, this is going to still go on. Uh, the NAACP has been ripping people off for over a century now. 
you know, people still believe in that, right? And so uh, Black Lives Matter is just the, the millennial Gen Z version of NAACP, where people feel like they're going to actually get something, but the only thing you get is a reward show, right? And uh, marches. And mm-hmm. so it, is, it is sad and unfortunate, but um, those things are constructed, I believe, for the masses and to, to scoop them up and mobilize them in a direction they want them to go in. And then for the people that are actually the thinkers and the people that actually, you know, criticize things, you know, the, the silent majority, the silent minority, right? Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Our, our thing is just like, hey, man, we can see the writing on the wall. We can see the finesse a mile away. And I'm not going to put my energy in that. I'm going to put my energy in something that I really think that is going to be impactful. So yeah. it, it sucks, man. Um, I really feel like awareness does need to be raised amongst the community and anybody that wants to support our community on things like this, because uh, these um, these co-op movements, um, they're not brand new. They're, they, there's a rule brick to this. There's a science to how they do it. And you can pretty much spot them from a mile away. And then from there, you can know not to uh, invest your energy or time into them. So, yeah. yeah, I think that that's true. And, you know, uh, one thing that's important to note is the reason why organizations like Black Lives Matter raise as much money as they do is because, first, well, let's be clear, Black Lives Matter, that was a perfect storm oh, yeah. because you have the organization taking off at the exact same time that the country is in the midst of a racial reckoning. So it was a perfect storm. Like they capitalized on opportunistic momentum, mm-hmm. basically. So that was a very unique situation. Um, you know, I, I, I guess the civil rights movement back in the 60s is the only thing that I can think is comparable. But like, you know, Black Lives Matter was able to capitalize off of the angst and frustration of a lot of people, not just black people, but people who believe that people in general should just be accorded basic human decency, right? And that's not just black people, that's a lot of reasonable fair-minded people. That's why when those marches was going on in the streets, you had just as many, if not more, non-black people in the streets going on, going along with that as black people. But but what black but what what organizations like Black Lives Matter are able to capitalize off of is people's need to contribute in way it, it, it they capitalize off of people's desire to contribute to something that they don't know how to fix so like how do you solve systemic racism how do you solve police brutality it's like the mass shooting situations like people feel helpless people people understand that it's wrong yet people don't what can i do no one knows what to do and so the the, 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 the the main thing that people can sort of gravitate towards is, well, perhaps I can donate money to an organization that does know what to do. Right, right. So organizations like Black Lives Matter benefit off of that dynamic because they're able to get people who feel helpless but want to help to sort of, you know, wrangle them in. And, and this is when you get millions of dollars being donated. And so it becomes incumbent upon people, I think, to just perhaps do a, a, a bit of a better job of doing some research and some homework into if do, if donations, if financial contributions, if fiscal contributions is the manner in which you can best see fit to help to affect change on an individual basis, doing your individual research so that you can um, contribute that money in ways that directly go towards helping underserved youth or people in minority communities, disenfranchised people, whatever you care about the most. So like education is a big thing. So like donate to LeBron's school or Jalen Rose's school, or you know what I'm saying? Like donate to, you know, somebody like, I don't, I don't think Maya Moore has an organization. She's kind of like an individual agent, but situations like that, where you know, this person is doing this and this can actually help. So like, you know, it, it's a two way street organizations like Black Lives Matter need to do a better job about not allowing the political infrastructure of the situation that they're in 
completely dominate their decision making process. But then on the other hand, the individual needs to do a better job of doing their own research and knowing where they're sending their money to. Don't just click the donate button and send money to something when you can't trace it back specifically to a cause or a particular institution or somewhere where, the, where you know the money is going. Right. And like, you know, otherwise you're just kind of throwing your money into the ether. And then when you figure out that people are getting paid, you kind of set yourself up to be disappointed. And some of that is on you because you don't want to just hit the donate button and just donate all willy nilly. Like you need to know where you're sending this stuff to. Um, you know, I, I get emails all the time from the legal defense fund, from the NAACP. I haven't donated one dime because every time I get an email from them, it's in the wake of some event. So right. if somebody gets shot or killed, right. if there's a shooting, if someone gets arrested, that's when I'm getting the emails. Right. Okay, well, so what do you want me to donate to? What exactly am I giving you this money for? Right. You know? So that kind of stuff, I don't see where I don't see where my money is going to help other than to give the organization more money as a whole to increase its treasury. And I'd rather just know if I'm going to put money somewhere, it's going to go to this particular place. Oh, they're building a gym in some rundown neighborhood in Atlanta or, you know what I'm saying, or any one of these inner city neighborhoods somewhere in Chicago, they building some gym that's going to help stop violence or whatever. Yeah, I'll send money directly to that place exactly. or the organization that's running that place, and I'll just let the chips fall where they may. Right. But just the general practice of hitting the donate button or – getting, you know, so, you know, allowing my emotions to take over how I make decisions with respect to how I choose to donate. People need to understand you're not help like that is not, like you said, it ain't revolutionary in any kind of way. We're not fixing race. That's why racism, that's why systemic racism doesn't stop because, you know, there's only very few applications that are working towards stemming the tide of it. And most people who choose to support causes are supporting causes that aren't systemically on the ground, trying to specifically and systematically target certain things that can help fix it. And so what you end up getting is just a lot of people with a lot of ideas and a lot of political motivations. And that basically just gets us nowhere. Yep. And I totally agree. And the, the, the cards that she plays, and just like how you said with the NAACP, uh, emails after a shooting or something like that is that they're playing on the emotions of black people. And just like you said, it just adds to the treasury. Exactly. Where does this going to, if we donated money to the NAACP and the NAACP swooped in on bad cases of injustice in the court systems or a black person getting shot unarmed or something, and they just swooped in and came in and saved the day. People would be, do I would be donating in mass to those people. Right, right. But nothing, yeah. nothing happens. The yeah. only thing happens is Al Sharpton shows up, yeah. starts rhyming a few words. People start, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just like, what? And so yeah. people like people like this colors woman, right? Because I don't even know if that's her real government name. It sounds so fake. But this, <laughs> this colors, yeah, this colors woman, her whole thing is everything's racism and sexism. Yeah, yeah, everything reverts back to racism and sexism. She plays that card every time. And so what she's doing is she's speaking to a specific demographic of people who are looking for racism and sexism at all times. Mm -hmm. and she says, hey, mm -hmm. I'm talking to my people here. So if you hip to my game, clearly that's why I'm on your TV show. But to all my people that's watching me on your TV show, racism, sexism, and they go, oh, snap, racism, sexism. <laughs> I'm with colors. I'm with colors. Yeah. So she yeah. just play, she just plays on the same emotional cards, the same ones. And so this and these are the same cards. And she's a admitted Marxist. The, the article mm -hmm. said it. Mm -hmm. And so when you're dealing with people with these ideologies, they're coming in with this, hey, you're oppressed ideology. Hey, you're the victim ideology. There's this machine and there's this, this. And yes, we all know that the, there's these elements going on. We spoke on systemic, systemic racism and stuff like that. We understand that there's other things at play. But at the same time, she lives in that area. The baked down, boiled down version of it, the part of it that's irrational and the part that doesn't really uh, make logical sense at times. 
because everything reverts to racism. I'm like, no, it's not. That's not racist. You're you just suck at that. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's pretty good. <laughs> so he got the job. Yeah. You know, so yeah, and then there are the moments where favoritism or racism, yeah, man, that happens. But at the same time, it's not every case though. And so there's people like her that would that would no that was racist. No, yeah. every single time a white person got a job over a black person, it was racist. Right. And it's like, yeah. And so whenever you're running around with that extremist ideology, then you're just trying to raise a group of extremists, a group of extremist socio paths called social justice workers. Yeah. And yeah. that speaks yeah. to the social justice workers. And just listen to that term, social justice workers. So at that point, workers. So at that point, these people are doing the job for the machine, for the machine. The, the machine has trained people on how to self-police people. And so now there's a, a whole governing body in the streets trying to tell me, censoring me mm-hmm. while I'm walking down the street. And so this speaks to all of that cancel culture stuff that you talked about. But who are the people, who are the people that are flaming uh, the the flame, what airing out the flames or whatever right. goes. Right. Right. It's people like colors. It's organizations like Black Lives Matter who use these rhetorics in order to promote more social justice rhetoric, in order to promote more people in delusional view. So they're not living in reality to actually stop what racism is. They're mm-hmm. living in this delusional uh, place where they can all, you know, do, uh, you know, self-fondling with one another yeah, yeah make themselves feel better in a group yeah. and walk out of those groups d- doing absolutely nothing i used yeah. to go to those meetings all the time it's a it's just a big group of people just talking about problems and no solutions and mm-hmm. so the only thing that people like her and black lives matter do is collect money off of people who obviously see the problem but like you said don't really know how to give a solution so here donate button i saw it on tv whoop de whoop and Black Lives Matter, they were set up to the point where, you know, there's other nonprofit organizations that set up the appropriate way where, you know, you're getting that genuine tax write off. But Black Lives Matter had that good one where you get that genuine tax write off. It was very obvious. And right then, oh, yeah, Black Lives Matter, whoop, 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 you know. And so it was just it was clean. It's a it was a clean, like you said, perfect storm. It just everything fit in place and they just ran it up. So, yeah, yeah man. So if if if. For those of us who do see it as it is, hey, man, kudos, man. We, we're preaching to the choir. If you are on the fence, hey, man, consider, you know. And if you uh, think everything is sexist and racist, then I can't help. Yeah, man. That's, yeah, we, we not, those, the, the, yeah, we, we, I've, all, I've already said, bro, I've given up. My commentary is not for the vocal minority. It, it, it is like, and, and, and that's the vocal minority is the people who are just always on the lookout. For for being able to declare themselves a victim, victimhood is a disease. Yeah, um, it is. And, and, and so, like, it is what it is. You you can't be helped if you feel like that, honestly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'll just say, man, people just need to do a bit better with conducting some due diligence into how you choose to do- allocate your money. If you want to, if, if, if donations are your thing, and 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 all, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So don't let people bully you into thinking that because you don't support Black Lives Matter or donate to causes like it, that that means that you're not a supporter or that you don't care. Um, No, it just means that you're going about it in a different way. And there's multiple ways to skin a cat. But if donations are your thing, then it just, you know, you should look into doing a better job of investigating, like, what organization is this? Where's the money going? What initiative are they spearheading specifically? Not this, not just some general idea of we are for this and we care about this. No, specifically, what are you doing? Is it a school? Is it a gymnasium? Is it a community center? You know, is it is it an outdoor pool? Is it, you know, you want to start neighborhood watches in certain neighborhoods? Like what specifically is it? You know, and you, we got to get specific and intentional. That's that's I think that's my overall point with a lot of this is being specific and being intentional. Um, Don't depend on Black Lives Matter to be specific or intentional because political organizations exist to raise money. That's what they exist to do. So just don't get caught up in that whirlwind of emotion 
and donate your calls to something that will set you that will set you up for being disappointed in the future. Agreed. So, uh, but that'll do it for that. Um, it is what it is. Black Lives Matter hasn't gotten any of my money, but you know <laughs> that ain't my stilo, so I ain't tripping about it. <laughs> uh, next up, man, we're gonna talk about.